in this video let's do one more thing with the pipes so you see I use my HDA for the pipe building you can see that we got this very obvious duplicating pattern in here see what we are going to do in this tutorial actually going to cut this tube where the flanges are so that they are not visible cuts and then we are going to rotate them individually randomly using loops so that our UV positions are a little bit differently in different places before we go through this all of this in HDA let's go and create the simple core and do it with just the pipes and then we can just implement it in our HDA to take a look at what the process actually is so what I'm going to do is create this kind of a shape maybe let's go in here Draw it like that and make sure it's polygon. So, this is going to be our pipe shape. Now, of course, what you want to do is bevel it. And all we have to bevel our points like that. So, basically, this is going to be our basic HDA setup. Just like in HDA, we are doing this one. And let's use a sweep. Round two for the second. Let's make maybe a little more resolution like that. So, but before we want to sweep it, we actually want to split all of these points right at the right where they start and begin the beveling, like in these places. What we're gonna do is actually put down a measure slope. We are gonna measure the curvature for our points. So you go to the element and play points. And for the measure, we're gonna measure the curvature. So you can see, we have now an attribute curvature. And you take a look at, and if you take a select these points that you want to actually split, you can see they are all basically the ones with the lowest values. You can see zero and zero point zero, and you can see all of the rest of them are zero point one already. So the rest of them are a lot bigger. So Basically, now we can create a group. Put down a group node, and we're gonna create the spare parameter. You go in here and edit interface. Let's create our float spare parameter. I'm just gonna put it in here and call it. Uh, let's call it threshold, and as a label, curvature threshold. Apply, accept, and now all we have to do is reference this attribute in our base group parameter. So add curvature equals, then remember, not equals, let's say it has to be smaller than or equals with value that of our threshold channel. And so for us to reference this one, we have to put it in a, before writing channel, we have to put in the back quotes ch. And in codes for channel was a threshold. I had copied it. I'm just gonna just paste it. So you can see it's re it's with the without the back quotes actually wouldn't know that it's a channel reference. So make sure it's a it's a back quotes for before the channel reference like that. It will understand the curvature reference because it's at, but for the channel make sure it's back quotes like that, and that's it. And so let's just you can see already. If I turn on these groups, see that I select more of these points. So I want around 0 0.1, like that. And all we have to do now for the group name, let's just say pipe splits. And for us to actually divide these points in half, we have to use a polycut node. So in polycut, there is an option for the poly points, cut points, so all you have to do is reference our pipe splits group. Just put it inside. You can see, and for the, what we want to do is we don't want to remove them, but we want to cut them, like that. Now if you go in the polygon selection, you can see we are now selecting these individual parts of the, our curve. And now if we sweep them, you can see we are now geometry that is not connected. Now let's put down a for each connected piece loop and first of all we do not want to put inside this sweep we actually want to incorporate inside the loop this sweep so I'm gonna put it inside here 
and I'm gonna feed in this polycard node inside connectivity. So it's still going to work. You can see we have our class and send for each. Let's create the meta import node. So first of all, let's go to the sweep. If you take it as a single pass, you can see we are basically processing every piece of this pipe individually. So first of all, let's create UVs. So go to UV and attributes, create UVs. There is going to be a couple of problems for now for our UVs. So first of all, let's turn off single pass. You can see now it's basically tiling to the nearest full of tiles. So this is not what we want. So let's visualize it. Let's visualize our UVs to make it a lot easier to see what the problem is. You can see we have good UVs and there's, there are squished ones like that. So to fix that, all we have to do to the sweep, and there's actually option for the UV sinks snap fit to the nearest tile boundary. Uncheck it. You see now we're getting the equal length UVs like that. See what kind of difference it makes. So make sure you have made that and that should be it, but first, but now all we have to do is also rotate. As you can see in the sweep node, there's actually option for the surface and there's actually option for the roll. And for us to randomize this roll, all we have to do is reference this metadata detail iteration attribute as our randomization randomizer. So let's just start writing detail. So first of all, for each referencing our so begin that's going to be three. Then the attribute and then zero. So now nothing is really going to happen because well first of all we are basically randomizing only by one degree and that's basically we're not gonna see the impact of it. And for, on second of all we want to also randomize it. So let's randomize it with the channel. Let's go to the parameters and let's create our float channel on top. Let's call it random and label it as randomizer accept. So now let's reuse the rand function around the detail. Rand and then in a in brackets all of this the run function only gives us number a random numbers from 0 to 1 and since you want to rotate at least 360 degrees to get and an randomize any possible position for our tube all we really have to do is after that multiply it after the brackets by 360 like that so now we're getting randomization and now we can introduce our randomization channel so let's say you don't like the randomization that it gave for the first time. It's good to have a dedicated channel that we can just take a look and randomize it. So we want to in include this randomization in our run function. So that's going to be details in, in brackets. So this is going to be after the detail. So let's say then we just multiply it by our channel. So that's channel name is random. So what is right? It was random like that. So now, if we change it, you can see we are getting our random rotations like that. You can see for every one of these connected pieces. But the another one last thing is that we do not get any randomization for the very first one, which is fine if we do not really care for it. But because basically the first iteration is always zero, so if we multiply zero by whenever channel one so we always going to get zero for us to fix it all we have to do is after the iteration brackets let's create another one let's create another brackets around the around the rand function like that all we have to do is after the zero and brackets add a plus one like that so basically we're start now starting instead of iteration from zero we are starting iteration from the one and now if you take a look and it starts randomizing you can see we are randomizing every piece of the pipe like that it's cool about this let's just add the quick material and see how it works so put in material node and i have in material part created bricks the default ones 
So bricks are going to be fine. So let's just add it. So let's take a look. And now let's start randomizing. You can see we are now very nicely randomizing position for our textures. And now let's incorporate our network inside our pipe builder RGA. So first of all, let's make it allow editing of content. Now let's take a look how it works. So in here you can see there's we are beveling inside the node, so you know that we don't need to incorporate this one. But there's material not for for some reason. I just deleted. So you can see basically with sweep. Basically what we're gonna do is delete the sweep and incorporate our sweep that we already have. So first of all let's delete the poly bevel since we're doing it inside the HDA. So all of this since from measure to the for each end, like that. Just select it and create the sub network like that. And also in here, let's create the inside sub network, let's create the output node like that. So now let's just copy it, control copy, go inside HDA, paste it. So for the connection, what we're going to do is connect it from the poly bevel inside here. And then we want to output to the UV transform node, like that. So for the measure, that's going to be the first one. But for the second one, we want to connect our second node to the... Since we're using the custom circle, we have channel reference for our HD. We want to make sure we are still referencing the sweep, but inside in here. So let's delete this one, sweep. Make sure we not use any reference from this sweep, so that's good. We can just delete it, and all our controls are still going to work. So just delete it and connect this reverse circle that we have channel references to the second input, like that. And then the second input is going to go to the our sweep cross section, like that. And then make sure that in sweep you are referencing not the round two but the second input from the from cross selection like that. Another thing I have to mention since we are having a curve that has a lot of straight edges, what's going to happen when we try to select our curvature, you can see that these points will not gonna be this like because they are basically straight, just like these points. So they're not going to be selected like that. So that is one negative and we can actually fix it with without using this measuring but completely different way. So if it's, you can use this method or we can use the little bit different method to select these points of edges that we want to then poly cut. So for that, for this method, it's actually going to be even better than this one, than measuring, but I want to show both of the ways. So what we're going to do is just, let's just, let's do this in side here, I guess. Yeah, let's do it in here. Right here. Let's put on the group node. Let's pipe inside here. And for the group, if you take a look at these points, let's just turn on the point numbers. Let's go outside here, and you can see that when we bevel it, so this is our curve that we before the beveling. You can see it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. But when we bevel it, you can see that 0, 3, 2, 5, you can see that the, the beginning numbers are all at the edges of the beveling so because the new points are actually giving the new numbers they're not going they're not going sequentially bigger from one side to other you can see that all of the small numbers that we have is at the front of the both beveling sides like that so you can use actually this information to gather this group and then and do not worry about how many we, times we bevel any of these let's create a group node inside this uh, Let's create group node right after in our sub network. And for the groups, you can see if you take a look and put make it point, and let's say we select this point, you can see it basically takes to select from 12 to 19 and 2 to 3, like that. So this kind of syntax we want to use for our. So we know that we want to start from zero. So that's always going to be curve, always going to have a zero. And then we want to use the endpoints function. 
So endpoints is basically going to give us how many points there are at any geometry. And we want to reference our geometry before the beveling, which is outside this node and it's inside style 2 input, like this. So let's reference this node. So let's go back inside our sub network. And all you do is write before the back quotes endpoints. And then in the in the brackets you have to reference this node. So you want to go outside and then go outside again. And then so what was it called? It is called style2 input. And then to reference this style2. Like that. So now what we have done, if you take a look at our group, we have selected from 0 to D6. So let's take a look how many points we have in here. So we have 7 points. Yes, so from 0 to 6 we have selected. But of course we have do a bit of math so we want to give it first of all if whenever we want to have we want to make it procedural so if we have more points it would not totally collapse and we have to redo this one. So first of all every time we're gonna bevel it we're gonna bevel it every point except for the last two. So first of all we want to increase decrease these endpoints uh, we want to subtract two from these two points like that so we have to do it with the brackets so for the brackets you have to put them after the back quotes like that in here and then we have to subtract two like that now we have only five points selected and now since we are beveling it we're basically going to get from one point we're gonna get two so all we have to do is create another bracket and then we have to just multiply by 2, like that. And now all we have to do is deal with this discrepancy where we are not selecting the last point. And all we have to do is just to add plus 1. So another bar brackets and plus 1 after all of that, like that. So this is basically because of we start with 0, and that's the discrepancy between the not selecting the last one. But now it should be fine. Let's just try it out. Let's go outside this pipe builder and let's just create a totally different curve. I'm just gonna deselect it and let's select create a new curve with more points, maybe more straight points like that. So that's going to be fine. Let's also make it maybe like that. Now let's connect it back in. You can see we're now getting very nice groups. So what I did is just created the basic switch that's going to switch between the styles of the measurements we create. So from between this one, our original one, and the one with the endpoint endpoints function like that. Then we can use it basically the same thing. It's gonna pull call it poly cut it. The group name is going to be the same for the both ones, so don't have to worry about that one. And now if you take a look, we're getting very nice cut up our tube is very nicely cut out. So if you go outside our HDA, let's turn off this one, you can see this, the flanges are basically going to hide our cuts like that very nicely. Now let's take a look at our result. So what I did is basically create a 4 each loop with the curves and we are basically using this HDA. We are making this copy and in Substance Painter you can see already that we are Whenever we have these cuts, you can see we are getting this very nice randomization between the textures. It's very, it's a lot less noticeable that we are basically tiling this texture for so many times. You can see our know, texture is looking like this. So that's a very cool thing you can do. Within it, basically now that we have created it, it's basically an automatic process for us to create whatever pipe networks you want. For the HDA, I will gonna update it. Maybe not right now, but if following this tutorial, you can update it by yourself, and it's a very cool thing to do. And hope you found this video useful, and see you next time, and take care.